Welcome back my friends, this is Craig and we're playing something a little bit different today. This is called Universe Sandbox. And I picked this up in the uh, Humble Bundle uh, with a couple other games. So I'm going to be doing some quick little videos on all these games. This is just, um, I don't know if I'd really call this a game, it's more of a sciency simulator there's no goal to the game there's no purpose um, it just simulates solar system and gravitational effects and and that sort of thing uh, right now you can see we're looking at earth see how accurate a representation there's Africa there's Europe Asia, Australia, Antarctica, and it looks like it's the middle of the night here in the uh, U.S. and North America, South America. So, starting off just here on good old Earth and the moon, uh, the sun is going to be off in that direction somewhere. It's not rendering in this specific scenario just because I've only selected the earth and the moon um, I've just got a couple minutes into this game so far I went through the tutorial um, I was kind of hoping there would be a little more that you could see and and point to and you know have labeled and stuff on the surfaces I did go and visit Titan uh, let's see if I can figure out let's see we'll go to our solar system and we are looking for where's Saturn let's go to Jupiter there's Pluto well there's Pluto and holy cow Jupiter's just a flying let's slow this down a little bit huh? uh, this way Do, 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 do. Slow your roll, Jupiter. There we go. Now we're getting. Now we're getting better. Holy cow! I was going nuts. So there's Jupiter. Let's get in the sunlight here. There's the great red spot that is slowly disappearing. Not so slowly. Uh, let's see what we can find for moons of Jupiter. Why are there no moons? Do I have moons turned off? Like I said, I've only got a couple minutes into this game so far. It might only show objects orbiting the sun. I'm going to assume. I well, should be able to tell really easily if we can see the moon here. Maybe I gotta be perpendicular to the ecliptic. No. Hmm. I don't remember how to get moons. Uh, but I thought this was really neat and fun things to do. Uh, let's see. What would happen if the sun or the earth was the same mass as the sun? The same size, but the same mass. So we're going to change. This is the mass of the Earth. So it's going to be the same size. The diameter is going to stay the same. Um, the density would have to change. Um, but we're going to change it from one Earth to the mass of one Sun. And we're going to pop up and zoom out a little bit. And we're going to... We're going to lower this down. Oh, there's a slide bar. That helps. And we're just going to see what happens. Go. And you can see everything's not only going around the sun, which is right here, but everything's going to start getting affected by the earth. Why did it stop? That 
That is weird. Let's kick this up a notch here. Whoa! Okay, too much. <laughs> a little too much English on that ball. Um, so the sun... Let's see. The sun seems to be a, have been ejected. Oddly. And taken series. And... What is that asteroid? Where'd it go? Down there. Calope. I'm not familiar with that asteroid. Uh, Ceres is a dwarf planet. Um, so the sun got ejected. Oddly enough, where did Earth wind up? Oh, there's Saturn. Saturn is on an outbound trajectory. Oh, so is Earth. What did Earth manage to pick up? Yeah, here. I'm focus on you. Earth picked up something. Venus! Earth managed to pick up Venus. So, it's taking Venus along with it for a ride out into interstellar space. Which I don't know if it really qualifies interstellar space, since the sun kind of makes its own. I guess it would be, because we'd be leaving the sun. Mars is gone. Jupiter's gone. Just, oh, Mercury's just way out of there. Yeah, that just wreaks havoc. Wreaks havoc. Um, so just kind of fun little, how long does it take the speed of light to, from the Earth to the moon? Ooh, this is new. Click the arrow. This is our solar system with the Earth set at the center. Okay. Slow down time. Okay. Set to real time. One second equals one second. Select the Earth. Shoot off a light pulse from the Earth. Oh, cool. Wow. I'm relatively surprised by this. That it was visible. That is really cool. And there's our light pulse there. And we can con watch it continue on. Uh, let's see, one time, uh, that's one tenth time. Let's do ten times. We're watching. This is that original pulse of light that we sent to the moon. It took 1.2 seconds to reach the moon. It's just getting ready to reach Mars. And we're traveling, light's traveling ten times faster right now. So there's Mars. Boop. And next up will be the sun because it appears at this juncture of the scenario, Mercury and Venus are on the opposite side of the sun relative to us. So then we reach the sun. Which, if I remember correctly, I believe is like eight minutes. I'm thinking back to Astronomy 101. I, I want to say it's like eight minutes, but I'm probably incorrect on that. Um, but that's pretty cool. Shoot off another light pulse. Okay. Zoom out to see where the light is now. Well, let's see what the first one is. Pew! <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Black hole. What's the black hole do? Diameter of the Earth changed. What? I didn't see what that said. Did we just convert Earth into a black hole? Oh, it's escape velocity equals the speed of light now. Okay. Cool. Um, so, yeah, there's an, a bunch of preloaded scenario. Oh, that was under fun things to do. Back. Launch asteroids at Earth. Alright, so we will do an asteroid impact 
and then we'll kind of cruise around at some other stuff. Goodbye, house. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> oh. Ooh, that is a little one. And I, I kind of want to play around with this to see if I can just randomly get it into an orbit. They're just shooting off into interstellar space at the moment. All right, so let's stop the shenanigans. We're going to go new. No, not new. Um, let's look at... Oh, Saturn and its moons. That was the first one I was looking at. Okay. So we go to Saturn and its moons. So there's Saturn, and it's got its rings set up as individual particles, which is pretty cool, actually, because that's the way they really are. Um, I mean, not quite to this scale, but same basic principle. It kind of gives you an idea. Um, here's Titan. There's been a lot of news on Titan lately. And... Go check that out. And I, I was hoping for detail onto the moons. Um, but sadly, there is not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Chill. Uh, there is some... There's... Yeah, there's pretty good detail for Saturn. Okay, seriously, you need to slow down. Shh, it's okay. It's okay. We'll do real time. Yeah, there's some pretty good detail to Saturn there. It ain't photo quality, but I will take it. We're inside Saturn at the moment, landing. You can land? Maybe not. Um, whoa, that was weird. All right, what else we got? Jupiter, collision with Jupiter. Jupiter and its moons. I love Jupiter. Got Ganymede, Io. Let's slow this down a little bit again. Look at that. Love it. And we got the red spot in the sunlight. This little ring system. Now, a good chunk of these moons you can actually see um, with minimal, minimal magnification. I mean, a good set of binoculars, you can pick out a couple of the moons of Jupiter. Um, they actually get out pretty decently far. What is this? So, yeah, these are all the bodies that are trapped in the gravitational pull of Jupiter. There's just a ridiculous amount of them. Saturn even has more. Um, let's look at local galaxies. So, here we are in the Milky Way. There's our sun, and if you zoom out a little bit, oh, there's all this crap. You can kind of see the bars of the spirals, and we are in between two of the arms of the spiral, uh, about two-thirds of the way out from the center. And if you go all the way into the center, whoa, we... um. We have a supermassive black hole in the middle <clears throat> that powers the entire thing. I seem to have lost my ability to zoom. Exit sir. Oh, I was on the surface. Did not want to be on the surface. Um, so then if we zoom out, there is Andromeda. And these are just various other... Are these... How far out are these? Ooh. 
was weird. Alright, so back to Andromeda. Where are you at? There it is. So here's Andromeda Galaxy, and it's on a bit of a tilt to us relative, you know, relative to our viewpoint, but it's a very similar galaxy. It's going to be the same spiraling. Um, ours is kind of a spiraling bar galaxy. If we go back to Milky Way, if we can get in there. Um, where is that? I think that's it. Uh, you see the bar in the center, and then it kind of spirals from there. There's Andromeda. There it is. Orient yourself to space and time. And um, whereas Sagittarius doesn't have quite as defined of a bar in the center. Uh, if I had prepared myself a little bit more with this video, I could have remembered why, but off the top of my head, I don't remember why. Um, and then, so this is our closest galaxy, and actually about three and a half billion years or so, give or take. Um, we're actually on a collision course with Andromeda. And I wonder if that has a simulation in here. does not appear that it does. Galaxy collision. Yeah, here we go. Um, so, and this is actually a pretty good representation. That's about the same orientation. It's kind of a classic video if you, if you do some research. This will be a classic um, simulation of galaxies colliding. And it's something obviously none of us are going to witness or, you know, mankind in general is not going to witness in three and a half billion years from now. But it's still kind of neat to think. And surprisingly, I mean, this would not mean the end of, you know, our solar system, the end of the sun or anything like that. Um, I mean, the sun, quite possibly, you'll be burnt out at that point. Anyways, um, but even with a collision like this, the actual stars that it contains, the likelihood of any two stars actually colliding is infinitesimal. Like, it is it is not going to happen. There's... You're talking about throwing a handful of sand at another handful of sand 10 feet off the ground, 30 feet away. The chances of two pieces of sand hitting each other is... It's just not going to happen. Um, what it does do is you get a lot of gravitational fun, and you see a lot of stars get ejected from the entire mass, and the centers, you've still got the two supermassive black holes in the center of each that'll retain a portion of their stars. Ooh. Whoa. I did something. Exit surface view. I don't know what I did. Um, darn it. But anyway, you'll get, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of stars will get ejected. Uh, more than likely, their planets will just travel along with them, and they'll just meander on through space as normal, and they just won't be a part of that galaxy, you know, or the new, the new super galaxy that would come out of it. Or, you know, they would eventually fall back into a regular orbit. I don't know if you can see my pointer. I'm, I'm doing things. Um, but, you know, they, they would not be in their normal orientation, but it also would not mean their destruction. So it's, it's one of those things that's kind of neat. And can I kind of bring that back up here. Um, it's just kind of, it's scary, but it's really neat to think about in my mind, like, you just see these massive bodies and you just think massive fiery explosions and and all doom and it's it's just really not like that at all. And I would try to speed it up again, but I don't know how. Um, let's go back to our solar system. Pause this. We can chart out relative sizes of everything, which I think is really neat. So, first off, you've got the sun. Obviously, that's going to be the biggest bit thing in the solar system. And um, continue, you know, we've got Jupiter. 
is the next largest and these are to scale as far as I understand um, you know reading through the wiki and that sort of thing that these are actually to scale and then you have uh, Saturn and yeah Saturn and then Neptune why hmm. weird Are these by mass Diameters 49, 248. They must be my. These are organized by mass, not by physical size. Um, Uranus is less dense. It weighs less than Neptune does, even though it's bigger. Um, so Neptune is composed of more ice and dirt, where Uranus is composed more of. Um, you know, ice vapor, so to speak, snow, or, or you know, different variations of gases, that sort of thing. So it's it's larger, but it weighs less. So that's why it seems a little bit out of order. And then uh, next up, we have Earth, and there is a substantial difference uh, between the, you know, the outer giants and then the rocky inner planets, as you can see. I mean, you could fit multiple Earths into. Uh, Uranus and obviously going up. Um, Mars, very similar in size and density to Earth. Um, or Venus, I mean. They're very, very close. And then you have Merc or Mars. I'm reading ahead. Um, then Mercury. And then it even gets into some of the dwarf planets, um, which right here we have um, Eris which is actually slightly bigger than Pluto, which we will finally get to see up close photos of next July 2015. Um, they've got the probe heading out that way. Uh, Deep Horizons, I believe. Um, I remember when it launched, I was, I was really stoked about it and thinking, oh my God, we've got forever until we see these photos. And um, and here, here it is. A, you know, now just under a year away. Um, I think last week uh, it was like the the thirteenth or something like thirteenth or fourteenth, somewhere in there of twenty fifteen is uh, of July is when it's going to be making its rendezvous. And then um, farther out, we've got more of the dwarf planets going out. All the way out, and then some asteroids. Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of a neat little toy. There's not much gameplay involved, but it's fun to just kind of play around with. Uh, this appears to just be a blob of moons, and then you get to watch them. Um, you can change, you can change the color based on acceleration. Um, velocity, you see him kind of congealing here, and this, I mean, this is kind of demonstrating accretion too, which is, you know, the, the formation of planets and moons and asteroids and stuff, so it, it's kind of a neat demonstration for accretion, and, and I'm sure there's a lot more options to utilize in this other than what I've played with, um, pull up some more of the close by stars and do similar to whoa <laughs> to what we did uh, with the planets so let's see if we can find the sun out of this bright ball of gas and dust and where is the sun there's the sun right there so out of the nearby stars the sun appears to be the fourth most dense. Um, if assuming these are all still going by density, so we have like the Neptune of suns. So it's kind of cool, neat little learning tool. I plan on. Um, Specifically for myself, I, I plan on... Oh, this is what happens when you have a bunch of 
space junk orbiting a bowling ball. <laughs> a football. Football. That's a soccer ball. Jeez. Um, I plan on using this for my kids. Uh, it's just something neat that they could play around with. And um, space science has always really interested me, so it's something fun I can just goof around with and see what happens if this does this or you know Jupiter is orbiting Earth vice versa and, and wreak havoc and shoot asteroids wow that's a lot bigger than a bowling ball <laughs> back into our bowling ball system and see how much that uh oh look they're all they're all going in for for a landing here let's get this sped up do, 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 do. one day <laughs> oh they're still going Put that a lot farther away than I thought I did. But, yeah, that's really cool. So, anyway, this is called Universe Sandbox. Um, it's still on the Humble Bundle for another day or two. Let's see if I can get that pulled up here. It was on the Weekly Bundle... And it looks like there is five days remaining. I honestly don't even know what today is. So probably the 22nd of July. And it is currently only available for Windows on this one. This is Universe Sandbox. And it is it is available for standalone. Um, and I'll put the link in the description video for both the Humble Bundle and for... Um, the the game by itself and it's also available on steam so if uh if you want to pick it up take a look at it it's really neat um like i said it's not much of a gameplay game but it is kind of a cool little Ooh, there was more down here um cool little tutorial uh show you a little bit about you know space sciences and gravitational stuff um help you out with your kerbal space program with the kerbins and I thought this was a good thing. I'm playing this on uh, John Glenn's birthday, so, you know, I thought it was appropriate. So, anyway, this has been Craig. You've been watching some Universe Sandbox. I will see you guys next time. Later.